Losing weight can be hard, and when it comes to prioritizing your health and feeling confident and strong, it can be difficult to know where to start. Now you can get your health in check and be confident that you're on the right track to getting healthy through HERS. Hims and HERS is changing women's health care by providing access to GLP-1 weekly injections with the same active ingredient as Ozempic and Wagovi, as well as oral medication kits. Weight loss by Hims and HERS is realistic, it's not restrictive, and it's focused on giving you access to the solution that is right for you. So you've been struggling with your weight loss journey, it's time you find an option that works for you with Hims and HERS. Start your free online visit today at forhers.com slash crappens. That's F-O-R-H-E-R-S dot com slash crappens for your personalized weight loss treatment options. Forhers.com slash crappens. HERS weight loss is not available everywhere. Compounded products are not FDA approved or verified for safety, effectiveness, or quality. Prescription required. Restrictions apply. Unlock your imagination with Audible. When you listen to audio content, your mind is free to paint the scenes and feel the emotions of a great story. Audible's extensive catalog is sure to have titles that you'll enjoy. Immerse yourself in captivating tales, learn from world-renowned experts, and discover new perspectives, all while multitasking or relaxing. There's more to imagine when you listen, and one title that I've been listening to is my friend Neil J. Young's Coming Out Republican, which talks about the history of gay Republicans. It's super fascinating and super interesting. As an Audible member, you choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. We know you're listening because you can't get enough drama. But there are some things that should stay drama-free. Like getting birth control, accessing gender-affirming care, getting tested for STIs. Healthcare shouldn't be dramatic, but lawmakers insist on attacking our rights to get the care we need and deserve. Your gift to Planned Parenthood helps all people, no matter their race, sexual orientation, gender identity, zip code, income, or immigration status, get affordable, high-quality care without judgment, stigma, or drama. So don't wait. Make your gift now at Planned Parenthood dot org slash protect Welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Ye Olde Bros. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. How are you, sweet guy? What's going I'm, on, Mooney? I'm great, thanks. What's going on with you? Well, we're starting Monday with Bueller licking his... Well, it's not his wiener. It's his back leg. But Bueller's okay. giving a nice lick back there. He's just getting Love himself that. ready for the week. Hey, everybody. I just want you to stop it in your day on this Monday, this fine Monday. Just lick yourself. Just lick yeah. yourself. Find a part of yourself that you can reach and just lick it, okay? Lick it. You can reach all the way down there. Lick your wiener or your whatever, your your inside wiener for, for you. You got to lick it. Whatever it, you it, got, it, lick it. it. And uh, yeah. let's get this Monday started right. Tonight is crappy hour, 530 uh, Pacific time. That's always super fun with our special guest, Sarah Fraser, who I've never met in my life until tonight. So who knows? <laughs> Maybe we'll be best friends. Maybe, Maybe we'll be enemies. Time will tell. Maybe we'll be lovers. Maybe um, we'll be lovers. Yes, that's on our YouTube channel. It is simulcast on Instagram, but uh, we have now moved it basically to live like to, all the interactivity is on YouTube. So if you want to join in, what's fun about Crappy Hour is that we bring people up on camera and we talk with them. So if you want to be part of that, come join us over on our YouTube. And I just think that is how to do it. Also, yeah. if you're like, where's the YouTube? Where's the Instagram? Where is all this gosh darn technology? It's all centered on our website, watchwhatcrappens.com. And it's also centered on our Patreon. So if you go to Patreon, it's a free post. So just, you'll see it there. Everyone can see it. You don't have to pay anything. Anybody can go over there and see the crappy hour post. So that's tonight. Super fun times ahead. Um, Great week ahead. We just finished The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. The final recap went up this morning super excited because that was a journey. I mean, we had a really good time, but it's always nice to finish something. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
I yeah. mean, lose mice. So we did that. So yay us, Ben. Like seriously, yay us. yay us. Another season down. So we did that. And now we're on to the rest of the week. This is on video as usual, available on Patreon. I will stop hawking shit now. Let's get on with it. Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 9, Episode 3. It's called Mama Knows Best. Why was it called that? Uh, I don't know. That was like, that was because clearly a situation. Had a scene with her mom? I think so. They were. They didn't really know what to do. I think they didn't know what to call it. Hmm. This was. This is sort of like a transitional episode. I mean, I thought it was a very funny episode, but story wise, not a lot happened. So they're just sort of setting us up for this trip to North Carolina. So it was a good episode. Yeah, I it was good episode. Virgins and Bunions, or something like that. So mm. yeah, I couldn't think of a title either. <laughs> Yeah, I think they should so have called it something. Yeah, Bunyan, like Bunny, like I was gonna like, call it Bunyan Canyon, but it's not in California. Yeah, that's a very specific. That's a that's a real inside baseball pun for Angelinos. But maybe yeah, like Bunyan, Bunyan in the canyon. But is there, is there, or no, Bunyan in the oven. But there's no pregnant people. Right? Is now. there something that rhymes with Paul, like Paul Bunyan? Like, well, actually, it's a Paul Bunyan, you know, because her ass will start drama. But I thought that was a little too <laughs> too far out there, Paula Bunyan or something. Anyway, it doesn't Gall matter. Bunyan. It's done. I ain't, I'm changing it. Okay, so let's go to the taglines. It's the first time we get taglines. Let's go for it. Um, there's like a new animation and everything. Yes. Like, look, cherry blossoms are flying all around us, and we're new. Robin's not here, so we're happier now. <laughs> Yeah, we're so that, much happier really, now in this opening. They're like, dun, 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 dun. It was so impressive to see that they finally got a budget for their opening credits. I mean, I remember, you know, for years they were just would sort of stand there and they had like two kind of like Doric columns on the sides. I think that was like to connote the fact that they were near DC, but it was a very yeah. like plain Fancy. background with two columns and maybe like a cherry blossom somewhere in the midst but now it's like a full-on ai rendering i mean it feels like they went into cap cut and loaded up a filter and some animations and some effects and they're give them a little more credit than that man <laughs> Lord, well, it just look, <laughs> they it definitely looks like there is some sort of like social media filter on um, like do you want like a cherry blossom border for your memories here use this filter and um they are swirling around so we start with giselle who says when the girls are away it's time for giselle to play I'm like wow that's all right another tagline about away. your daughters do something for fuck's sake just do something your whole life doesn't have to be about your damn kids okay everybody that's for all of you okay here's yeah. what you tell your kids hi Leave me alone, please. Also, That's the best advice you can ever give a child. Then they won't rely on you for everything. Okay, just say go away. Right there. That's simpler. Go away. Tell them. Also, no visual evidence of Giselle playing, uh, and also no ever. visual evidence of her kids being away. Um, at least in this episode. So <laughs> we're gonna wait for this tagline to actually uh, be relevant to the show. <laughs> And she's also calling herself kind of a mouse, which is weird because no one wants to be a rat. I guess rats are different than mice, but still. <laughs> she is calling herself a mouse. <laughs> yeah. So then is Wendy and she's like, I quit grading, but I'm still passing judgments. I like that. Um, that's good. That's a good I like that. Yeah. Although I'm still mad at her for quitting. Isn't that weird? I know. I, I'm I don't. Mom. Yeah, I also don't think she should have quit. But I like that she is honest about passing judgment because so many people are like, I don't judge. I do not judge. It's like, no, you oh, judge. Yeah. She's judge. I like that she's like that. I love uh, to judge. Mia ha says the following. Marriage can be temporary, but ink is permanent. Um, that's hilarious because we all can tell this is definitely not a permanent situation. It already wasn't permanent before. Because you guys already had to have a relationship that didn't work out. This relationship is built on non-permanence. That's the <laughs> point of the relationship. <laughs> you have an eraser mate pen with you, ma'am. It's not also, permanent. It's ink, and ink is not permanent. <laughs> it's just not. I mean, Sharpie or you know, but also INC, just dissolve it. You know what I mean? So um <laughs> Ashley is like from kitty pools to the dating pool. I'm ready to dive in. Dive into divorce court. I'm <laughs> dive into divorce dive pool. In to fucking dating, okay, miss. I'm ready to date. We've done this for three years with you. Divorce <laughs> divorce golem. And then we can talk about you getting some extra dick. I can't believe they gave Ashley an extra show about dating when she's not divorced. Come on. <laughs> Also, by the way, the number one pool you should never dive into, a kiddie pool. 
Like, enjoy your neck injury. Yeah. <laughs> it's from kiddie pools to the dating pool. I'm ready to dive in. Hopefully, I'll injure less children this time. That's, that was awesome. <laughs> I know. Ma'am, do not dive into that ankle deep pool. Um, God, when I was a kid. <laughs> Can we cut that tagline down. Uh, let's just cut out the public, public apology to those people's children. <laughs> From pits of open fu- open flame to vats of acid, I'm ready to dive in. <laughs> it's like, ma'am, that's, that's not From helpful. From pushing either. people off of cliffs to throwing people out of planes, I harm children. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, now we're just in horrible, horrible child abuse. Town From like six that. lane highways <laughs> to airline tarmacs, I'm ready to dive in. <laughs> no, that's not going to be good for you. You're gonna, you're gonna From die. what? Chippers to okay. <laughs> God, uh, I used to love the kiddie pool. God, when I was a kid, I was I remember being so sad when I had to graduate out of the kiddie pool. Oh, I loved just walking into that knee deep water and just walk around in circles. It was just the best. You didn't have to do any effort, but you got the oh, you yeah. got all the you got all the perks of swimming without any of the danger. It was lovely. oh yeah. Talk yeah. about being a big fish in a little pond because I was a real fat little kid, chunky little kid. And um, I would get in that kiddie pool. I'd slosh all of the water out oh, and yeah. then I'd get out. And all the other kids were like, hey, where'd the water go? And I was like, that's it. Suck it, bitches. And then I'd be <laughs> your agent of chaos in the kiddie pool. <laughs> I was. I was like, fuck you and your kiddie pool. And they ain't talking yeah. to me. There goes your water. Sorry. And then uh, my mom told me that thing's full of pee. And in my mind, I was like, yeah, because I peed in it. But um, <laughs> then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? My pee's okay. Other people's pee is not okay. And yeah. so I stopped going in the kiddie pool and started being in the adult pool because there's more room for it to spread around. There is more. And yeah. that's when I learned to swim. Ding. Yeah. Avoid the avoid the floating pee. Um, <laughs> Stacy says, "I know how to host a show and to steal one too." Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. look at Stacy coming All in right. thinking she's going to steal the show. I love that. Yeah. And then we have Kierna. Oh, it's your turn for Kierna. Kieran is like, I own a business, I mind my business, and I stand on business, business, business. Business. And I just bought a copy of Big Business. <laughs> um, there's a lot of business here. What does Karen do again? Oh, she owns salons. Like spa right? or a salon yeah, or she something owns, like that. Like spas yeah. and stuff. God, she's so beautiful. She, her cheekbones are insane. She's. So, I mean, everyone on this show is beautiful. I think you have to be beautiful on this show. It's not like you know a Walmart like. They just let everybody in. <laughs> the greeter just stops you. Sorry, go back out to your beautiful. Like, oh, wait a minute. Um, they're all beautiful, but she is just, I mean, the whole package, this girl. So then uh, we go to Karen, and uh, Karen's like, oh, this is you. Darling, I am the fence and the gatekeeper. I have a fence and a gate. Two levels of security around my compound. Well, I'm glad you have a fence, because how many of you knocked down in the past couple of months? Fence <laughs> knocker downer. I can't believe they would give Karen another fence thing after she just ran over a tree. <laughs> Okay. I yeah, I'm also surprised they're leaning into this fence thing. I mean, that was probably the highlight of last season was her tagline that made no sense. <laughs> I don't ride the fence, I am the fence. Like that is still one of the most bizarre house live housewife taglines. The fact that they come back to it this season is pretty amazing. Yeah. So let's go to the Giselle kicking the ladies out of the GNA event. Dun 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 Dun, dun. And um, everyone's like, oh, my God. Uh, Stacy's like, uh, Ashley, did you not tell us to be here by 8 o'clock? Well, it is 8 o'clock. Are we not here? It is 8 o'clock. This is me stealing the show, everybody. We're having a time fight. <laughs> and Ash is like, well, actually, it's 8.04, so no. At which point, I would have been like, it was 8 o'clock when we walked in the building. It took you four minutes to get over here. That's not our and fault. I'm up the stairs because nobody can have an event without five flights of stairs in this town. Okay. Exactly. So Giselle's like, my father passed away months ago and Karen's getting an award. Who gives a shit? It's the same woman who hit, just hit a tree. <laughs> this is a real event, which we are raising real money. Don't play with me. Not tonight. And uh, she's like, hoes, don't be listening. So then uh, Mia and Stacy are walking down the stairs. They're like, bitch. <laughs> Stacy says, I have never been so offended in my entire life. I was like, well, lucky you. Because <laughs> shit, I've been that offended like four times today already. It's only 1030 here. 
This is nothing, Stacy. You just started on Potomac. It's going to get a lot worse from here on out. My day started by my dog looking me in the eye and then pooping. That's how it started. Do you think that's respectful? No, I'm no. offended. Where's my Where's my trip home? My free ride yeah. home. People to feel bad for me. Most I feel offended like if you've been in your life. Get the fuck out of here with that. I feel like someone really offended me this weekend, but I don't remember what it was. So I'm gonna wait for it to to waft over me. And I'll, Joni and I'll make Mitchell because he went to see Joni Mitchell. I did see. Oh, I did see Joni Mitchell. She did not offend me, but it was probably someone at the concert. You know, I will say by the way. If you want to talk about a, a respectful audience, the Joni Mitchell concert, just people sit, you know, you would have loved it, Ronnie. Everyone sits and it, it's quiet and you just listen and like so little talking. Oh, girls, amazing. why I always love Adele, you know? Yeah, it was, sit it was down. great. Yeah, no, I, I'm trying to think there was probably someone at the Joni Mitchell concert who offended me and I'm, I'm going to have to sitting loudly, probably creaking back and forth in their bench at the bowl. Was it at the bowl? Oh, I'll tell you who offended. It was at the bowl. Okay. There was a lady in our row who she got drunk and there was an intermission and the intermission is 15 minutes long and just as the lights go down she stands up and is like sorry gotta go to the bathroom should have gone before should have gone before I'm like, you had an entire intermission and now we're doing the whole thing where you stand up and you squeeze by as Joni mitchell's coming on stage and everything that was offensive to me <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole yeah Okay, so um, let's see. Um, so Ashley's like, wait a minute, girls, wait a minute, wait a minute. And Stacey's like, quite frankly, I am embarrassed, I am offended, and I stand on business. Sorry, wrong line. That was someone else's <laughs> line. God, it sticks in my head. I stand on business, I leave on business, I'm so offended by business. Why am I saying that? <laughs> music it's very tasteless and i don't do tasteless i don't do glassless either i'm like um yes i'm sure yes mia absolutely mia, you met your husband at the steak and lobster strip club can we start a ball that? gown it was glassy <laughs> don't forget it was a ball gown strip club okay <laughs> you were literally married to gordon who first met karen and was like hey blah, 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 blah. Let's please not talk about how tasteless you're not. No, he said, excuse me. He was classy about it. <laughs> <laughs> so Jassy is telling Ashley, um, excuse me, we were at 2003 military time, and that's 803, three minutes behind your ass time. <laughs> I love that Jassy's pulling out military time. She's like, um, my husband is in sports, which makes me have the right to use military time right now <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> i'm speaking military time slash european time so she's like really sending your security are you crazy i would have rather not been invited and then she just walks out she's like furious and ash is telling us that like you know in my opinion it's between giselle and karen and karen was was born at night i'm sure a very dark night because there were no street lights back then <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but definitely not last night <laughs> So I know damn well Karen knew what she was doing when she was sent that invitation. <laughs> uh, so then um, Jossie, who's very friendly with her driver, I like that she knows her driver's name. Um, she's like, Fami, we're ready. She's like, Fami's like Fami, guys. So. Fami's like, my name is Stuart. That's okay. <laughs> um, but so don't ever tell Fami to get you at 8 a.m. Or, or don't tell him to get you at 8 p.m. He'll always come at 8 in the morning. He only does military time. Oh, okay. <laughs> he just wants that those clock numbers to go up. Um, <laughs> so Giselle, I don't know if you clocked this. Be <laughs> pun intended. Uh, did you notice at this point Giselle's talking with some guests and she's like, "Well, I shouldn't have invited them." And then the guest is like, "Well, you should take the barcode, take it outside. You want support? There you go." Did you see who that guest was? I sure did. The awful gay from below deck. That's right, because we know he's from the Baltimore area because or Maryland. We know he's from Maryland because it, that was featured on below deck and i was just waiting for him to show up on this show he's probably already been on the show many times and i was like oh there he is again yeah below deck gay warming his way in of course anything that shoots around there you know he's warming his way in and being like hey oh my god i've got a line you got a barcode do it outside you should take it outside and give him a barcode <laughs> i was like oh, this fucking guy <laughs> i'm surprised he wasn't still in a speedo jumping out <laughs> jumping into a pool <laughs> How could you say that when I'm nice to black people? Wasn't that his thing off the low? I think he said something like that. With, 
his best friends were black, and he's like, why would you let your husbands talk to me like that? I'm gay, and I'm nice to black people. And they're like, oh, God. <laughs> I mean, he had so many different awful episodes. He was swimming late at night. Swimming, yeah, the swimming, jumping in the there water. Was the, he got yeah. to a fight with a girl when they broke the glass or something like that. Yeah. He was like, Crystal, you're awful. <laughs> this was actually his best one, though. Get a barcode and take it outside, because that, <laughs> that idea was actually pretty funny. Yeah. So uh, he's like, yeah, take a barcode so they can still donate before they leave. <laughs> Which, I mean, listen, maybe he redeemed himself for me because that shit was funny. <laughs> so the the ladies are now in the sprinter van and Vivian comes out to just say hi to them because Vivian is the true class actor of the show, it turns out. So she comes over to say hi and she's like, this is crazy. And Stacey's like, I am literally shaking. And I was like, no, that's just the way Fami drives. But um, then Ashley comes out with the with the guy, whatever his name is. Is his name Brandon or something? She she comes out with him, and she's got the thing, and she's like, um, yeah, so sorry, everyone. I know we kicked you guys out, but if you would like to, you know, donate, though, we like, here's a pan. Of, here's, a, here's a QR code for you to donate. And they're like, <laughs> fuck QR you. <laughs> <laughs> and I like Jassy goes, no, no, Fami, can you get her out? <laughs> She's going to make the driver kick her out. <laughs> Fami, please. Fami's like, well, I'm in a totally different compartment. <laughs> and Ashley goes, but this is the QR code for the Brain Tumor Society. And she's like <laughs> holding the barcode in there. And then uh, Fami just pushes the door, like, <laughs> it starts closing. And it starts clo closing on Ashley. And she's like, wait a minute, that's harassment. Really? Gollum lover? How many times did you stick up for the ass grabber over there? You don't get to even use that word. For something like this, ma'am. By the way, you cannot actively walk out of a building to go to some people in a, doing their own thing in a vehicle, try to make them pay money for something, and then when they close the door and you say that they're the ones harassing you, you actively <laughs> moved over to them. You're the harasser. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny though and so Ashley's like but do you want me to leave you the QR code <laughs> Jesse goes go to bed you got bags bye <laughs> and Stacey of course this is flummoxed this was so funny I'm really loving that we're seeing Stacy's flummox side. Like, I think this is going to be her character. Is that like this when she's Stacey, upset, yeah. she's like, she's like, oh my god. I mean, what kind of businesswoman walks in like? And Mia's like, yeah, well, not very... one that I want to do business with. Yeah, her personality is very offended, mm -hmm. um, which I think is very funny. Uh, we yeah. need that because that's what this show is. You know, the show is built on that. Uh, Giselle, really? Yes. You're taking my middle seat for my birthday. So really, that's what that's how we're playing on my great five seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. She, Stacy, is really giving fussy indignation, and I love it. Yeah, and she's already she's already pulled the Aaron. I've never been so offended in my entire life. Never in my life. I love when people say shit like that. I know, it's great. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Getting engaged can be stressful. Getting the right ring won't be at BlueNile.com. The jewelers at BlueNile.com have sparkled down to a science with beautiful lab-grown diamonds worthy of your most brilliant moments. Their lab-grown diamonds are independently graded and guaranteed identical to natural diamonds and ready to ship to your door. Get $50 off your purchase of $500 or more with code AUDIO at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com code AUDIO for $50 off. This Halloween, ghoul all out with Instacart. Whether you're hunting for the perfect costume, eyeing that giant bag of candy, or casting spells with eerie decor, we've got it all in one place. Download the Instacart app and get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes. Plus, enjoy $0 delivery fees on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Service fees, other fees, and additional terms apply. Instacart. Bringing the store to your door this Halloween. So then everyone at the event is cheersing and everything, and Stacy's like, I mean, this is Washington, D.C. Have some class. I'm like, um, I don't know if class is what I associate with D.C. that much anymore, but that's fine. Maybe have some classism, but I don't <laughs> think D.C. is necessarily known for the class, okay? Let's uh, take a look at our politicians, and we'll see Let's what these guys are up to. January 6th. So Mia's like, fuck her, I don't want to do coffee and tea. I don't want to decorate her tacky-ass house. I don't want to do shit with her, okay? Damn Willy Wonka-ass furniture. <laughs> <laughs> like, nasty like, woman. 
I was like, Won- <laughs> Willy Wonka ass furniture. Did she just cross over to Mary M. Cosby's land? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so now we get, uh, that's over. So now we get little snippets of everybody at home. Wendy and um, her family are, are doing a drip check. What's yeah, that? what's a drip check? It's like, like your clothes, like 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 oh. it cool, it's like cool and everything. It's her sons are like now at that age where they look like little teenagers, but they still speak like little boys, and it's like weird. And then um, yeah, they're no, little men now. I didn't know what that, a drip check was. Well, look well at I don't know what a drip things. check is, but I've heard of drip before, so I just assume she was checking to make sure their drip looked good. But also, she's raising very expensive children, which is not good because he's like, okay, well, this shirt was five hundred dollars, and these pants were eight hundred dollars you know he's and i think they were kidding yeah. but they're pricing all their stuff really high and i'm like yeah i don't also know the, also there like was a leak in the ceiling the there was, was a leak that? in the ceiling there was a leak in the ceiling that they had to put a bucket under they're like drip check oh that's a drip check no that's, i'm just joking what are you telling me <laughs> i'm just joking. were they really doing that no no <laughs> god damn it i was making a pun I'm such a white old queen. I can't take a drip check is slang term used to describe when someone with a cool, trendy or sexy sense of style shows off their outfit. For example, hey, my dude, you have some serious drip drip check. <laughs> you were you were getting close to Ramona singer voice with that. Hey, my dude, <laughs> you have some serious drip drip check. <laughs> my drip looks drip young. Check. Your drip looks old. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go to Kiarna and her boyfriend talking about his work. And um, I forgot this scene. The, here's the I thing forgot that Kiarna. scene entirely. I love Kiarna. I think Kiarna is really beautiful. And I think I love her like sarcasm. And I think she seems to have a good sense of humor. I never remember a damn scene she's in. All yeah, I remember I, is the diarrhea scene. There's something missing with this one. There's something with Kiarna that's like, there. there is like a stickiness issue. Like she... Um, she is very beautiful, but I feel like we just keep coming back to that because we don't really know what else to say about her. I feel like there's a lot of scenes that take place in that brown kitchen of hers with the blue walls. And um, I'm just like, I'm like, okay, but, <laughs> but she's what pretty. Else? What else? Yeah. So yeah, I feel like every time I see Kiara, I just think, what else? But what, what else? else though? No. Um, and I don't know what it is yet. Maybe it'll come out this season. But um, also, I find it so offensive to keep saying, oh, my God, but she's so pretty. I just Same. <sighs> okay, let's talk so about something else about her. Like that, but I'm, I'm the one who does it, you know? I love that she has so many vowels in her name. It's like a lot of vowels. That's K-E-I-A-R-N-A. It's a lot. Well, that's cool. Her name starts with a K because that's like my last name, Karam. Yeah. She's like, um, she's like jewelry because every kiss begins with a K. And I love that she has spas because, you know, I love some mm-hmm. facial work, mm-hmm. even though I haven't, I visibly haven't done it. By the way, guys, don't stop doing um, facials and uh, chemical peels and Botox if you're already doing them, because if you don't do them, it's like a gremlin who got hit with water. You just, your face suddenly just will go very oh, really? quickly. <laughs> yes. Is that, why don't you get why don't you get like stuff out here in la then because i'm assuming i don't not trust anybody because a bunch of fucking shysters i called this lady and she's like oh to see the doctor it's 500 dollars, but then you can use that 500 dollars towards any treatment that you get in the future i'm like you don't do a free consultation and she's like no we don't waste the doctor's time and i was like I'm, you're oh. not wasting my fucking time wow, get the we doctor don't... in fucking line with my time wow we don't waste the doctor's time that's, yeah, I'm like, I'm waiting till I go back to Texas and I'm going to just get, you're not even going to recognize me. <laughs> I'm going to have so much, so many they're like, We're going to do the Botox. steak treatment. They're just put steaks on your face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to come back a tomahawk. Okay, so um, stay, So they're all talking about the, the night before hours or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And um, so Stacy and Jassy are checking in. and uh, Jassy Stassi's, goes over to Stacy's house. And stay, they're asking him, like, how are you feeling about it? How are you feeling? She's like, oh, my God, that bothered me. And Stacy's like, why on earth is Giselle walking around with security? Are we supposed to have security with these girls? Yes. <laughs> yes, actually. Giselle always has security. Giselle is always terrified of her cast members on this show. Yeah, so Ashley shows up now. And um uh she she comes in and everything and she's stacy's like well what a night ashley and almost say like with the tone of like you're gonna apologize to me right and she's like yeah dna had a great night and she's like well we did not have a great night did i mention i was horrified by the behavior of everyone there and i've never been thrown out of an event before in my life 
<laughs> and Jesse's like, uh, GNA gangsters and alcohol. Uh, y- y- you guys said you're going to ca- kick us out like the gangsters you are. And she's like, um, wait a minute. Drip check. $800. <laughs> She's like, cakes is an alcohol. And Stacey says, well, that's how you act. <laughs> so then, Like gangsters <laughs> with alcohol. <laughs> I've never been so gangsterized in my entire life, you gangster giver. You you alcohol having gangster. <laughs> so um, Karen shows up. She kind of rings the doorbell. And Jassy's like, well, Ashley, I do want to say, I do want to genuinely say that although you were not welcome in my sprinter, I am sorry that the door closed on you. <laughs> and Ashley goes, yeah, I'm a little sore today, actually, Jassy. She goes, well, you're not, because I reenacted it. And I was glad to know that it actually closes quite softly. <laughs> Let the Jazzy reenact it. She's like, Fami, close the door on me. Fami, stop being nervous. Fami, stop crying. Hot Fami. Fami, press the button on me. Fami, you're not going to hurt me. Okay. It's okay, Fami. It's okay, Fami. You can press the button. I'll be fine. Ow, Fami. Why did you do that, Fami? Fami's like, at 2023. I close the door on her. That's writing in this diary. <laughs> this military time. I love that Jassy's doing like her own version of cereal. She's like, and so I went and decided to try out how hard does that door close after all? Bling, 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 bling. And then bling, I went bling, to the Best Buy and there's no way that A could have gotten there. Did the door close softly or strongly? <laughs> Uh, so she's like, I reenacted it. You're fine. And she's like, but you didn't know that initially when you pushed the button. <laughs> but, but she has had some familiarity with vehicles, I'm sure, that have automatic closing doors. And we all know they do not close like guillotines. Yeah. So uh, Karen comes in. And she's like, your dog. Your dog is all over me. Why is your dog licking me? It's licking me. It's all over. Dogs love me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because... because um. <laughs> yeah, she wait, no, is this yeah, this is when the dog comes and this 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 is when the dog kisses her on the, on the, mm-hmm. <laughs> on the mouth. Yes. The dog kisses her on the mouth, which is funny because she's like appalled, right? You know, she's thinking yeah. like, who has a dog in someone's face when you walk in a door? She's like, Oh, oh, I'm married to the Black Bill Gates. How could this dog kiss me? <laughs> And they're still talking about the door in the other room. And now she's like, but you tried to close the door and it and it opened, thankfully, not that you knew it would. You could have murdered me. She's like, Ashley, I knew it would open. Uh-uh. And that kind of stuff is really rude. <laughs> Ashley doing her best to change the conversation to how <laughs> she was rude the night before. She was almost Probably. like, like her arm was almost severed by this door. And Karen goes, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> So uh, she's like, well, I have a question for you. Giselle said she talked to you Wednesday and you told Giselle I'm not inviting the other ladies because I don't want a conflict with the group. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I probably said that before I realized I've lost both of my parents. (laughs) Why shouldn't I have my friends cheer me on when I'm receiving the Oscar award for my wonderful work in my Ladam commercial? Why? (laughs) And she's and then Ash is like, but then at like six thirty on Thursday morning, you send out that group chat, and we see the chat again where you know Karen tells everyone, you know, like, oh yeah, you can come to both. So and then Giselle's response of like, don't come to mine, just go to Karen's. So Karen's like, well, I certainly did. This was a very prestigious moment in my life, receiving the CVS award for longest receipt. It was very important for me. <laughs> it was me. Uh, there was also a woman being honored who had eaten the most mayonnaise in the uh, Tri-State DMV area um, for years. I mean, very prestigious event. Mm. Huge, huge. And Ashley's like, yeah, but like, when I asked what the award was last week, you couldn't even tell me what the award was. And that's not true. It's the award for greatest fence gate person, hybrid human person. <laughs> So then she's like, well, I was at an Inquisition birthday party last week. So let's be clear. All right. And she's like, no. And Stacey goes, oh, my God. She literally has answered all of your questions. Stop questioning Karen. This is the most offensive thing I've been around in my entire life. (laughs) It was a nice little deflection, and that's fine. And Karen's like, well, I know you are not sitting here trying to tell me that I'm deflecting. I'm sorry. When Michael was pinching asses, one, two, and three. Oh, I 
I can't answer that. That was you. Yeah, I so we, see, <laughs> we see flashbacks to that. And um, Karen, they just are Karen, so ready. They have oh, they always have something in the back pocket that they're like, oh yeah, remember that thing from four seasons ago? Boop. But like, you know. I'm not. I, I'm also not saying that Karen shouldn't have said it. Like Karen absolutely should have said it. It's just so funny how they're always ready with the ammo. Yes. And um, I think Karen's like, well, I am in a case currently, Ashley, where I could have died. I could have died, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> or taking the life of someone else, yes. <laughs> I love Karen. I could have died drunk driving. I you guys should really be worried for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost hit by a drunk driver. That was me. <laughs> it's like... I almost hit myself. I, have you ever tried to take out one of your contacts while you were driving drunk? Very difficult. I hit myself right in the cheek. <laughs> So, and I can't, and I love Ashley just quietly adding, or you could have killed someone else, by the way. You're not the victim here. So Karen's like, well, I'm grateful that no one else got hurt. And let me, let me dust off one of my, an oldie but goodie. Let me be very clear. I knew when you gave me those four Uber seats that you were being shady as fuck. And you see, back to the birthday, something we hadn't seen before, which is that Ashley gave her four, like, gift cards for Uber. Oh, yeah, it was on last week. Oh, it she was? gave her Uber cards. Yeah. I missed it. It's just so casual because this show, they're so oh, shady. Oh, no, yeah, all the that's time. right. Mm -hmm. Then she was just like, okay, well, here's her flowers and her Uber cards. <laughs> <laughs> so Karen's like, well, you were shady and I should have given the back to you so you could get a consultation to get that human being of a fucking acorn off your foot. <laughs> I was like, I don't even understand what she's talking about, but I love it. And then we see that she has this big bunion, and they like zoom in on. They do like one of those like bounce zooms where you just see your foot, and they, like a little part of her foot goes boom, and then it comes back in. And as she puts her foot on the on the island, she goes, "Are you coming for my bunions? I have two of them." <laughs> Karen's like, Igor is a human being on your foot. <laughs> Stace is like, and now here comes Ashley's bunions. Where did they come from? Ashley's a beautiful woman. From head to ankle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've never been more offended by a foot. She goes, how about you worry about whether or not you're getting the jail time, okay? And, oh, sorry, that was Ashley says that. Yeah. And Karen's like, oh, uh, oh Ashley. She says, I didn't want to I didn't want to go there, but you took me there. And she goes, Ashley, that is too much. And she's like, oh, really? You think you're going to come for my bunions and I'm not going to come for your for your knees? And she's like, I said your feet, your feet. And she's like, OK, well, now you're making me laugh. <laughs> she just starts laughing because this fight's so stupid even for them. <laughs> so how are we going to move forward, guys? Let's forgive each other and blah, 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 blah. And what's what's up with Giselle? Is she going to apologize? And uh, Ashley's like, well, she's clearly wrong, which I was surprised to hear Ashley say because Ashley was really fighting for Giselle the whole time, you know? Actually, she's right. kind of a fence sitter, too. I think at this point, she's like, okay, do I have to have my wagon hitched to Giselle anymore? Because it used to be Giselle and Robin who would team up against me, but now Giselle doesn't have Robin. So am I still stuck with Giselle? Well, I think that um, Ashley is really avoiding... Um a situation here because she is she's dodging some heat here because she sort of acted like oh well this is Giselle who did this and you know you guys should be mad at her like I don't I don't co-sign it but the truth is it was she was a co-host and she could have very easily said no Giselle they're my guests too and I would like them to stay they're only three minutes late I know you're mad just don't talk to them you know and she just sort of acted like she had no say in this event when it was her event too so she actually could have done something um yeah but either way but it's ashley so she's like me manages giselle instead so mm -hmm. <laughs> that's pretty much what's happening and they're just wondering like is giselle like stacy needs giselle to apologize and ashley's like yeah giselle doesn't really do that <laughs> And she goes, well, the only way I'm going to move forward is if Giselle is able to apologize. And she's like, okay, good luck with that. <laughs> well, we'll be waiting. So now let's go to Wendy's. Her mom, Susan, is over. And, and she's like, it baffles me. You don't know how to make yam porridge still, Wendy. <laughs> yeah, Come on. Just... She's like, you know, like, and let me tell you something that I left in your freezer that we must use. And she like pulls out this giant, fro like frozen dried fish. <laughs> she says, this dogfish is very expensive. And Wendy's like, yeah, but it's really stinky. I'm like, you guys didn't even wrap up that fish. It's just in the freezer, just like Let's that. Sh shove it in the freezer, you know, <laughs> move over the move over the dogfish to get to the best berries. And I like that Susan was like, she's holding this giant fish by the tail and <laughs> she starts poking it at the dog. 
daughter's face. I forget the daughter's name. The daughter's like, uh. <laughs> so, so then um, they start talking about going on this North Carolina trip. And we see a flashback of Mia inviting them saying, I absolutely have a special place for Lake Norman in my heart. It's where I've grown up. It's where I found success. Really? <laughs> what what was that is? doing? <laughs> I'm in the joint. Well, can we call the Chamber of Commerce in uh, like in Lake Norman and ask them <laughs> what the fuck Mia did? Because I'm still not sure. The first ever joint chiropractic in Lake Norman was founded by us. I learned how to how to properly straighten brochures <laughs> in doctor's offices in Lake Norman. <laughs> Uh, so Wendy is talking about how it's gonna be your birthday when they're there and everything. It's gonna be so fun because of that. And um, then Wendy's like, "By the way, Mom, did I tell you that Eddie's dad called me to wish me a happy Mother's Day?" And Susan's like, "Oh wow, the tide is turning." And we find out, like, we hear more about this issue between like. You know, Eddie has a has an issue with his parents, and we find out that actually Wendy's mom used to be friends with Eddie's mom, but then they started to like drift apart, and then when they got engaged, it sort of exacerbated the whole situation. Yeah. Still doesn't really clue us into anything, but we have just greater context. Yeah, well, suppose yeah, now she's gonna be we're going to get to meet the the other side dun, 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 which i'm very interested in because you know you always i always want to hear every side of story you know i want to hear if wendy and her mom did anything because wendy's wendy's mom's a little troublemaker and she always acts so <laughs> that's a good word for it a little yeah. troublemaker <laughs> and wendy's like yeah i was thinking about inviting his parents to my 40th birthday party and then susan turns around and it's like oh, what is susan gonna say and she goes please do <laughs> you're like oh okay cool but then we also find out like here's the thing susan she, she is like oh yeah you know what i'm for peace you know me i'm like are you and then we i just always feel like there's probably like another side of the story it's like classic like self-serving parents saying like i am always for peace i never right. start anything and then we also hear the story about how um eddie's mom was at the baptism and um that like susan went up to hug her and she was like the, at his mom and she was like no thank you yeah she pushed me away but i told her god will judge you <laughs> <laughs> Susan, uh, cracks me up she goes yes invite them let them come i've learned not to give them a hug anymore if she comes to me though we're gonna have a showdown i was like yes there she is i'm ready for it that whole oh i'm all for peace yeah right sometimes the only way through peace is blowing blowing people up it's war, okay? It's war. Commercials. Here comes one right now. T-Mobile 5G internet keeps getting better. Boost your connection to harder to reach places with Home Internet Plus and get internet right where you want it. With Wi-Fi that reaches the attic, I finally have a home office. Get a free upgrade to T-Mobile Home Internet Plus while supplies last. Home Internet Plus starts at 50 bucks a month with auto pay and any voice line. Check availability at T-Mobile.com slash home internet. During congestion, customers on this plan may notice speeds lower than other customers and further reductions using greater than 1.2 terabytes per month due to data prioritization. After $20 bill credit plus $5 per month without auto pay, debit or bank account required. Regulatory fees included for qualifying accounts. $35 connection charge applies. Credit Karma makes building your credit straightforward and stress-free with help from our credit builder. Sign up today at creditkarma.com and start enhancing your financial health. Credit Karma, your partner in building a brighter financial future. Credit Builder Plan is serviced by Credit Karma Credit Builder and requires a line of credit and savings account provided by Cross River Bank member FDIC. So now we go over to Kierna's house. Uh, actually, it's Greg's house, technically, and Kieran is there, and her mom comes over. I literally thought this was her sister, and then when it said her, her mom, I was shocked. So Can I tell she, you something so horrible, and I'm not even lying to you? What? I totally forgot to see. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, there is something about Kieran scenes that I'm like, I don't remember this at you know, like, Literally, did this happen? Yeah, I, I get it. Be well, because she's pretty soft-spoken. Like, I would not say, her, like, she's just, she hasn't really come out of her shell yet, in my view. And they live in sort of more modest means than the rest of the, the, the cast. So they're just sort of like, it's like sort of visiting TLC land a little bit. And so I feel like it's like, we're like, oh, okay. So like your mind kind of checks out a little, you know, but I feel like, you know, they, they cast her for a reason. And I know that, you know, which her cheekbones are just amazing, guys. She just has beautiful cheekbones. What can we say? 
<laughs> she was cast for her cheekbones. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't need to talk about why. It's just like another example where I'm like, I don't remember. I literally just don't remember this. Scene. Well, in this case, um, her, Greg just had a deep root canal. So um, he's resting. <laughs> In case, in case that does that does that uh, trigger any memories? The deep root canal. Yeah. So um, she yeah she's talking about how she's Kieran has never been like a thirsty ring girl. You know she's just happy to be with Greg and stuff. So the mom comes over, and but the mom though seems to be a little bit of a thirsty ring girl, and she's basically hectoring Kierna to get a ring. Oh yes, now I remember. I loved her mom. She's like, so when's the ring? She's like, leave me alone about the ring. She's like be the thirsty ring girl <laughs> uh yeah i liked her mom so then um what else is going on here let me find well out. she also kind of like kiernan's like yeah greg doesn't really like my eggs she was like let me see those eggs she's like really she's like, he also doesn't like my pancakes she's like let me see those pancakes the mom is like what are you doing wrong let me yeah. help you um so michelle's like just remember family first well god god first and then family and then money get the money Mom. So then we go to Giselle, and um, she's with Angel and Adore. They're all getting ready for prom. Well, those girls are getting ready for prom. <laughs> and Giselle's like, oh, my God, it is prom season. I'm like, oh, gosh, Giselle, now's the prom. Could you just teach them to drive at the same time? And we what's are... the other one they usually do with kids on this show? Pack them for college and send them yeah. away. Can we just condense it all? We've seen this like 10 times this season. I mean, this it's year alone. It's not fair. We already had prom last season with the older one. And like, so now we're having prom again. I'm like a little over it. So Jamal is there. And so they're talking about like, oh, my God. And like curfew like you here's the curfew and jamal's got a girlfriend and uh you know just all like whatever he's the father of my daughters that will never change he's the father uh, of a lot of people's daughters <laughs> they the streets <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of problems that's why jamal looks so bored he's like this again oh my god <laughs> it's like my, my 18th child watching get ready for prom oh my god even cal looks bored and he's normally always smiling so <laughs> Basically, she's just like, I can't believe they're about to go off to college and I'm going to be all alone. You know, something we've never seen before on this network. People musing about their kids moving away. So now we go over to Mia and Inc. They have a staycation rental, essentially, to get away from Gordon. Yeah, a staycation. And um, she's like, well, we're, Gordon lives in my building. And when Inc's in town to keep the peace, we rent an Airbnb for privacy and no random pop-ups for coffee. And that's a little strange. That's a little strange. I don't think it's strange. That man was counting on you to change his diapers. And now he's all alone. It's like his nurse just up and quit him and he can't find another one to work for free. He doesn't have any more money. What's he supposed to do? Well, he's going to show up at your damn house for coffee just in case he has a heart attack or a stroke. Your ass can take care of him anyway. Gordon's like, listen, you don't understand. My dream has always been to live out a sitcom premise. And so me living in the same building as you and then popping in for coffee is like literally making me so happy right now. Truly. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon just comes, the, the door slams open and Gordon just slides in on his socks. Like, <laughs> coffee. And they go, there he is again. <laughs> just me, my husband, and my ex. Thursdays oh, at the um, So we're going to meet Jacqueline's on again, off again, Pat, because it's his birthday, and we're going to celebrate it because they've been together for 14 years, which is interesting. I mean, I don't know. I guess they don't subtract the years that they've taken a break or not liked each other. Um, so then we find out that they, Ink and Mia, were pretty wild. They, oh, Jacqueline is telling us, okay, she sees Ink, and she's like, oh, it's Ink. Hi, Ink. Ink's on camera. I can't believe it. <laughs> I never thought that Ink was really just here for camera time. This is absolutely <laughs> crazy. Wow, Ink. Ink, so good to see you. Yeah, she says that like Ink, like they, like Mia and Ink split up after high school, and then Ink was hitting Jacqueline up a lot, and she was like, "No, I'm gonna stay away." Also, I'm just gonna let America know that Ink is messy. That's what I'm basically doing right now. So Ink was trying to get with Jacqueline, or was he just like, "I'm lonely. You want to go to the Applebee's?" He was trying to fuck Jacqueline. Yeah, let's be honest. Come on, Ink. Really? <laughs> Come on. It could have been all of the above. He wanted to get with her and also go to Applebee's. Everything can be true. That is a but massive jug you're drinking out of. <laughs> I ordered it online 
because I forgot the name of those jugs that we the love. Hydro jug. Monster. I know, but I forgot at the time, so I was just like, go send me a gallon jug. Look at how big this fucking thing is. It's like one of the ones in the office where you turn it upside down onto the little thing. <laughs> it is enormous. It is like you're taking a silo and drinking from the top of it. So, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so big it's covering up your face okay so <laughs> patrick patrick is a pp because because ink is like hey aren't you called a ppp or something like that which isn't that like a type of insurance so it's that like kind of loan that came out during the pandemic that nobody paid back <laughs> isn't it mauricio's like, like ah so we took out a few million we paid some employees we're not making it back probably worth employees. 19 zillion dollars 19 zillion dollars it's yeah so, so you know why should i pay that money back I pay that money because back. i pay enough in taxes so in the tax holders can take it because you know i support those it. people all year people and without me they would have nothing me, so suck it america suck it it's so yeah upsetting <laughs> <laughs> uh so then um patrick and ink are left alone while the girls go to the other room and um <laughs> ink and Pat's with, Patrick has his kids, and Ink goes, wow, your princesses look just like you. And he goes, yeah, I tried denying them. <laughs> <laughs> Ink is like, you can't. And Patrick goes, you got any kids? And Ink is like, mm-hmm. And then they cut to Jeremiah talking to Mia, which is like <laughs> shady. But of course, I was like, does he look more like Gordon? Or does he look more like Ink? I can't tell. He actually looked a lot like Mia to me, so I really couldn't tell. Um, so Jacqueline's like, so they're, they're talking about, uh, Gordon and, uh, Mia and she's like, girl, where do you want me to start? One day he had me, uh, take care of his hangnail and the next day he missed his coffee cup. So he needed his coffee cup. <laughs> and Patrick's like, well, you gotta say what he's going through. You gotta, you gotta see what he's going through. Also, you can't control it. Sometimes, you know, you just gotta be positive and help him out. <laughs> like Patrick. You showed up on this show, business casual, speaking level headedly. Are you aware that you're on Bravo? <laughs> also, you're Patrick is so like <laughs> so nice and yes. also hilarious. Like, I already love him. He's had one scene, and I'm like, love him, marry him, bring yeah, him on. Yeah, Patrick is great. He's a cat. I would marry this guy. Yeah, yeah, he's cute. Like, everything about him is great. So, he doesn't like, want to be on camera, which I like. He's like super nervous to be there, you know? He also showed up and he had been rained on. Did you notice his shirt was all wet from the rain? And he was like, whatever. He was like, cool. he was like, chill about it. He wasn't like, oh my God, I'm rained on. I like I this. wish he was like, oh my God, I got rained on. Can I take off my shirt and you guys can yeah. dry it for me? That would have been hot. Yeah. So Mia's like, Gordon being in the same building is definitely beneficial for the children. And like, my dad not being in my life is an adolescent with a disaster. And so we get all of that. So she's just saying it's just, it's really important for her to have, for her kids have a positive father influence in their life. And, and also uh, some question about who their father is. Yeah. She's like, I <laughs> just didn't want it to be a disaster, which is why I told the father of his children that the children was the child was fathered by somebody else <laughs> do you hear your own logic <laughs> so then um uh stacy is at sweat dc with gerard her personal trainer and now we meet her special friend <laughs> recap for jessica may wrote her special friend <laughs> her special friend tj <laughs> so stacy tells us uh, the closer I started to get toward my divorce, I've started to allow myself to even think about the possibility of a romantic relationship with TJ. I don't know. It just started to feel different. And then I knew something was happening. Something special. Something special and not touchingly. It's great. I'm so happy. I, I love this. I love this situation. <laughs> so they're doing a ball workout or whatever. And, um, it's, you know, those ball lifting things. I don't understand. Yeah. Working out. It's so weird. And then, um, she goes, speaking of balls and he goes, Oh, listen, I'm not sleeping with you. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like super charming, super worked out, super fit, super cute. I don't super trust him at all. I don't know that guy. smile. I don't trust that smile. Well, also no. I thought it was, I thought it was funny that like when he when he sort of lumbers in he's like hey he goes and he sort of like touches her by the by the elbows like hey honey it doesn't say honey he's like hey and then he goes up to gerard and does like a full-on like 
embrace arms all around but then like we'll barely touch her i was like you know i think you need to switch your priorities and it, like you guys don't have to have sex but you can at least like hug that's okay too well i'll go a step further and point out that she also has great chemistry with gerard the trainer and i'm wondering if they're with gerard as some sort of a third and i don't mean <laughs> that they're both that they're having sex with him i just mean like energy wise maybe he's like the secret to their relationship the secret like, sauce fall in love while they were working out because they're they both want gerard i can tell you that right well now. let me like, tell you I something have no idea of the man's sexuality i'm not saying he's gay or anything like that because so i think just because he's a vir uh, he's like virginal does not make him gay i don't necessarily think he's gay but i do see chemistry with both of them <laughs> and the trainer so maybe well, there's was... a little buyer curiosity or something because there's something going on I would love if they had like a little throuple together. I don't know what Gerard's sexuality is, um, but I do know his booty was his booty was out there, and I, and I was like, was, wow, was I was like, great. that's a booty. That was amazing. That was, yeah, was that amazing. was. I was like, I feel like it deserved actually a little bit more attention because it was yeah. like Gerard was doing great work. I, I don't know much about Gerard or what's going on with him. I know that his smile is too charming, and that he's walked up a lot of hills in his life or a lot of stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I know you could put like a coffee cup on that thing. It was out there. It was it it's was amazing. big and round. Yeah, um, either way, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a picture of it and then I'm gonna go to Kinko's and have them blow up a poster. <laughs> Gerard, the breakout hit of the episode. Um, between Gerard and that bunion, you know, this was like a big episode for protruding, <laughs> protruding yeah, body parts episode for sure. <laughs> So anyway, TJ uh, is basically like, you know, Stacy's like, so like, how much do you want to sleep with me? And he goes, on a scale of one to 10, the letter K. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, that means it's like you're past the numbers, so you have to get into letters. And she goes, what does that mean? He goes, zero. <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't think, okay. This isn't great. <laughs> this, is, this is a bad start. This That's is a bad like, start. For sure. At least humor her and say it means, oh, I can't wait to sleep with you. Like, don't say, like, I literally have no interest in sleeping with you. <laughs> so she's like, well, he's not a virgin. He's had intimacy with other partners. He just doesn't want to be intimate with a woman unless she's his wife. So how many women has he been intimate with that aren't you? that aren't his wife you know what mm -hmm. i mean like that's crazy or how many people has he been married to i don't know like you know find your newfound virginity with another partner if yeah. you're not a virgin and you've like had sex with a bunch of people but then you're just a virgin with me i'm gonna start like taking it it's my man but like it's my moves just tell me what it is or don't tell me but just stop pretending you want to have sex with me because then what does he want out of i don't know and you know people have commented like this is normal like a lot of couples do this i know i've heard of it it's not like i'm living on a different planet he just seems very charismatic and sexual like i get a sexual energy off of him i really do i don't get like a non-sexual energy Maybe that's why, because he hasn't had sex in so long. It's just dripping off of him, you know? I get a politician energy off of him, and that makes me nervous. Yeah. You know? I get a politician who has late night commercials, like selling, you know, knives that can cut through Coke cans, mm. <laughs> but also sexual. I get, I get all of it. <laughs> it's a lot of, a lot of, it's a hybrid. <laughs> He's got a lot of energy coming off of him. He's got like a charisma. He's got a riz. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's, he's got riz. So they are finishing up their workout and TJ's like, so how are you handling everything with the divorce? And she's like, how am I handling what specifically? Because like, you know, negotiations, progress, where you are. And she's like, yeah, it's a lot. And he's like, he's like, I, he's like, I love that you lo avoid talking about it. She's like, well, I don't, well, you know, if I'm spending time with you, I don't want to talk about heavy stuff. Like, she's like, I don't want to talk about my ex when I'm with you. I like that. Yeah. I and like then she, that. but then he's like, oh, "We're on a date. Don't want, we don't like. We don't I don't want, want to talk about this in front of Gerard. Okay, yeah, <laughs> Gerard's right over there. Okay, I don't want to make his booty sad. So well, Gerard's booty's just crying. It's like, oh, divorce. So TJ's like, but you don't want to talk about heavy stuff, but you want to lift heavy stuff. I was like, okay, he, you're losing me, TJ. You really are. No, just please, just just keep the camera focused on this butt, please. Okay, <laughs> more butt, more butt, less talky." Okay. Yeah. So then um, she's like, well, you know, my husband and I were a very well known couple in this area, and I serve on a lot of boards. So I'm really sort of walking a tightrope with my new best friend, but also being respectful of the life that I'm transitioning from. And he's like, there's a process for everything. Yeah. You fuck a lot. And then if you still want to fuck a few months later, then you 
move in together. Right. <laughs> and then after that, I don't know. I mean, everyone has their own process, but and she's right, like, before you buy is all I'm saying. <laughs> she's like, can you just give me the grace of it being a new situation? He goes, I just need to make sure that there is a start and a finish. I'm like, I don't know if you guys even know what you're talking about anymore. You guys are speaking so abstractly to each other. But uh, all I can say is... The problem with you is that you never finish. You need mm -hmm. to finish. That's the start. The start is that you finish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then we can talk about the future. Right. So now we're at Mia's apartment and um, Ink is there. And Mia's like, I want to make some cookies. He's like, I like that. And so, um, so Mia's like, oh my God, I love it here in this apartment. Mike, the kids are having the best time. Honestly, it makes me feel good because they are so happy because she's now in her fourth, uh, location in four years, a new place every season. She's like Mark. Yeah. Marks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, she's like, the kids are happy because I'm happy. Yeah, not for long. <laughs> Spoiler <laughs> alert. So then he's like, oh, yeah, you know, there's so much good energy. And, you know, and look, like you can see that monument, you know, that's good. <laughs> she's like, yeah. Um, so then uh, they talk about the trip coming up and she's going to, you know, Lake Norman. And then he goes, is Auntie coming? And she goes, who's Auntie? Oh, Giselle. And he goes, yeah, didn't she kick you guys out? She goes, oh, we talked. So now they talk about Karen and she has a court date. And yeah. she's like, well, when I took a peek, it said criminal court. And I'm like, why criminal court? A jury? No wonder you're like on a whole campaign trail. Like you need to go shake some babies. <laughs> well, that's not how you say it. <laughs> yeah, she was like, you need to shake some babies. <laughs> I mean, shake some hands and kiss some babies. And then shake some babies. I mean, shake some hands. Um, I love that how slick Mia is that she just, just slides it right in there. You know, when I took a peek, I saw it's like, you snooped. And people get in trouble on these shows all the time. Like, why would you look into that? Did you did you order a background check? And so she's just like, I took a little peek. <laughs> just so funny. She just sort of puts it in there like she was just, you know, going through People Magazine and decided to flip to page 66 just for a second and then flip back, you know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ronnie fell over. Yeah. You safe? You safe and sound? I'm fine, yeah. His just camera camera's, just camera's toppling, you know. This is just another day at the office, Ben. So basically, Karen has a criminal uh, court date, and Ink is like, so you guys going to try to support her? And she's like, yeah, well, should we have a sign saying, free Karen? <laughs> <laughs> um, didn't need the second Ink and Mia story. It was the same thing over and over, but... You know, this episode's so funny, I'll forgive it. So then we go to Giselle going over to Zoo's Cocktail Garden uh, with Ashley. And um, they're, she's like, oh, you know, listen, I think Karen has Jassy and Stassi under some spell. So I need to get these ladies away from Karen to get, them know, to get to know them without her because they don't know Karen's tricks. This is the typical Karen behavior. When you know your back is up against the wall, make friends with new people. <laughs> Ooh, you caught her. You got her. Yep. So they arrive, and Jassy's like, Giselle, I am really glad that you greeted me in a very lovingly manner here at 23 o'clock. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong military time. Sorry, that was overseas military time. But yes, thank you for greeting me in a very loving manner. And Giselle's like, that's how I do, honey. And Jazzy's like, well, it was very different from last time, you know, so if that's how you do, you know, I'm happy to see that side. I was like, oh, a hug. Let's do it. Okay, I appreciate that. And Giselle's like, well, you know, I can say I wasn't mad at you guys, you know, I well, was really first, towards Karen. At first, she says it's different than last time. And Giselle goes, it is. I was like, oh, <laughs> here we go. Let's see who breaks it first. Who breaks it? Because she's like, listen, newbie, I'm not going to back down. But then she does. Because yeah. these newbies aren't fucking around. They're like, they listen here, lady. We can take you down. I've already got stealing your show in my tagline. Okay. She's like, I've Thank met Taylor Swift. Swift. Okay. Yeah. I met Taylor Swift. I can pull some real rank over you right now. Yeah. So Giselle's like, I, it really was towards Karen. And I, it's something that Karen and I will deal with because Karen knew exactly what she was doing. So apologies for throwing you out. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. Appreciate that. So then Wendy comes out and she's like, uh, Giselle, apologize. <laughs> she starts cracking up. <laughs> And they're like, yeah, she did. And so uh, Wendy's like, wow, who is this Giselle? What has happened to Giselle? This is Giselle's body double. It's crazy. <laughs> Giselle's like, what is that strange fish smell? She's like, oh, sorry, it was the freezer. <laughs> so, Dog fish. <laughs> my mother's in town. 
So Giselle's like, I know these ladies kind of like caught my wrath and didn't really have anything to do with that. And that's why I apologize because it wasn't nice. So um, anyway, they start talking about this trip and everything. And we see also a text from Mia, her invitation for Lake Norman. She was like, happy Friday, Queens. I'd like to officially invite you all to travel with me to the Queen City. And we will stay in an estate at Lake Norman for a much needed getaway. Cruise, dine, and be fine. Check emails for additional information. See you all soon. Karen's going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> Please come to Lake Norman, the first place I ever became a billionaire businesswoman. Uh, so then, oh, you said she lives like Meredith, so now I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Meredith, well, there never was a discussion either way about which Lake Norman we're going to. <laughs> Please, everybody, join me to go to Lake Bruxy, where everybody gets <laughs> fed by bottles, and they get their logos stamped on jogging pants from Ollie. Boom, boom. If anyone will also be bringing their toddler, I will be providing free swimmies for everyone, because Bruxy is still learning how to swim. <laughs> so, um... They're talking about that and who's going to come and who's not. And Stacy's like, well, I'm going to come. And I have a beautiful daughter. I've been married 16 years. And I have a beautiful, amazing daughter, Arabella. She's eight. And we're going through divorce. Not me and my daughter, unfortunately. But uh, in the past 16 years we were together, we sort of lost each other. Not Arabella. Does it sound like I'm divorcing and losing my child? Because I really don't mean that. We have a great relationship. I'm very responsible with her. <laughs> just, I was like, so do you want a divorce? Because it sounds like you're sad about it. <laughs> there was nothing that Stacey said. It sounded like Stacey was sad. That That's a sad thing. But I'm like, well, Giselle goes right to trying to make Stacey sound like she misses her husband, right? Because it sounds like you're sad about it. When I was getting to the end of the road, I was happy. That's why I'm asking. You're not happy. What's wrong with you? Are you okay? Do you want to make out with your ex-husband right now? You do, don't you? This isn't your fault. <laughs> She's terrible. Like, it's abnormal to be sad that you're getting a divorce. So yeah, weird. She's like, and Ash is like, well, don't worry, she has a new friend. And Giselle's like, oh, so you've moved on. And Stacey's like, oh, <gasps> I cannot believe that you would say that. Uh, and she's like, yeah, no, she has a new friend. Like, sorry, Stacey, I had to say it. Otherwise, everyone would be like, what? She's good. What? What? And she's like, no, it's just, Ashley, I have spent multiple days with you at my home talking about my marriage and my children. I have never been so offended by someone saying I have a new friend. And uh, she's like, oh, she came over for charcuterie and drinks and just spilled all of my business after I provided charcuterie and drinks that I mentioned. <laughs> I was like, "What? Because this is ridiculous. You're shooting scenes. You're talking about this guy. You're 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 talking about TJ on camera, and then you're shocked that it's brought up on camera." And Stacey's like, "Ashley, I am so cautious because I'm talking about the mental health of my daughter on national television, no less. And I'm not ashamed of my friend. I'm ashamed of the way that you brought it to this very tiny table we're all sitting at." <laughs> She's like, "Okay, well, I didn't know you were telling people individually, you know." I mean, America is full of a lot of people, but I didn't know. And she's like, well, Ashley is really surprising me. I've never been more surprised in my entire life. And I, she's just not the person I thought she was. She's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and now she was like, I didn't even know TJ was a bean to spill. The way it was conveyed to me, you just had a friend. She talks about Vivian all the time. If TJ is just a friend like Vivian, what's the big deal? Why can't I just say his name? I'm like, well, you know he's not just a friend. But to Ashley's credit, she did say you have a new friend. Like, Ashley, we have seen Ashley, Ashley at her messiest. And this was definitely not her messiest. I actually yeah. don't even think it was actually said in a messy way. I think she just brought it up in a nice way. Like, well, you have someone else now. I thought she was actually this defending Stacey against Giselle. This new cast is not going to have it from any of these ladies. That's for damn sure. And I think it's so funny. All of them. I mean, at least Jassy and Stacey are both, like, ready. They're like, you're not going to treat us like shit, okay? Yeah. We're not going to get the first season brush off from you two, okay? Yeah. And so then um, Kiarna, oh, now it's travel day. She gets an apology, okay? And Giselle's like, well, you know, they say that kids' self-awareness and sense of self is based on their mother's happiness. So focus on your happiness because it's only going to make your daughter better. <laughs> okay, well, thanks Great. for the advice. No one's asking you. 
your parenting advice. She's like, I'm still, I just, thank you. Thank you for saying that. And she just like literally flicks yeah, she her flicks hair. Her <laughs> so now it's time for everyone to go to the airport to go to Lake Norman. So Kieran is there and she's like, let's go to Lake Norman because I'm hoping for this to be a super cute girl's trip and let's get ready to have a cute ass time. So, um, you know, talking about how it's gonna be nice to go on this trip, etc. And they're gonna have a good kiki and, you know, but, she, but Giselle's gonna have, she, she and Karen need to do some talking. So they're like, where's Stacy? And Mia says, she's taking a car, you guys, because somebody in her family died in an aviation accident. So for the month of May, she doesn't fly. And everyone's just like, huh. Everyone's like, we want to make okay. fun of this, but we feel like we can't. So we'll just go, huh. <laughs> so um <laughs> that's something the month of may all right yeah we see a flashback where stacy's like i want to honor my mother's brother it's like okay oh. so um now they are they fly they land they get into different cars and everything and um kieran is asking jassy how long she's been dating her man and they talk about dating for a few years and um Jassy was talking about how he's never been married and stuff like that, but he has he has children and um, you know just just finding out more about them. Yeah, and then uh, Wendy in the other car is talking about turning forty, and she's like, "This is the last day of my thirties, isn't that crazy?" And Giselle's like, "No, <laughs> not really." <laughs> <laughs> and so then, um they're talking about church and wendy's like do you go to catholic church on sundays and she said yes and she goes oh my god do you really i learned something about giselle bryant every time i'm with her i never knew this <laughs> and she's like the only time i stopped going to catholic church was when i was married and she's like but wasn't that a big transition for you because he's baptist she goes like she's like yeah at the time you know because he's ame african methodist episcopal church and wendy is like yeah it's a totally different vibe totally yeah yeah so yeah, i mean once you get out of i can't believe you go back to catholic church i know you haven't been to many churches ben but catholic church is like the roughest of all the churches as far as rules and regulations yeah. and length girl it's yeah like i've been to catholic hours. weddings Oh, weddings. They, they're forever. They're forever. They're like the length of a term, like bringing a child to term. They take forever. <laughs> Catholic school's harsh. They beat you with rulers. It's like rough. And so yeah. once you get out and you see like other kinds of church, I can't believe anybody would go back. <laughs> it's like every other church is like a rock concert compared to Catholicism. Wow. Um, well, it's very Giselle though. You're like, <laughs> I love it. I, I can't wait to go back to five hour services. <laughs> I am so Giselle is telling the saying that she's actually enjoying Wendy. She's like, Can you imagine that's coming out of my mouth right now? I'm enjoying Wendy. And Wendy's like, We're taking baby steps. It's gonna take time, but we'll see where it goes. Like, yes. Uh, but by the way, did you have to bring that giant frozen fish into this car? <laughs> it's leaking up the place. <laughs> I'm sorry, it sticks to my fingers. It sticks to my fingers. Just trying to get it away from my mother. So then we go to me and Karen, and she's like, mm, oh, Karen, this is going to be so much fun. We're in Queen City, and I want us to behave like queens. So how are you doing? How are you doing? I've already called the tree, still can't talk. How are you? Karen's like, well, I'm going through a lot. Mm, my back is against the wall, and you know how it's legal. You can't talk about it. And I just I try not to say that over and over again, but I can't make it less legal. I can't just cut out half of law and order and expect it to still air every night in every country. <laughs> Across. Karen, it's, it's on, on the internet, though. I don't even know what that sound was, Karen, but it's on the internet. She goes, well, then read it. Well, I did. I took a little peek. And she was like, okay. She goes, well, that's why I'm checking on you. She goes, you know, it's all about taking care of Karen. Like, I'm always soldiering for someone else in my family. And it was a moment when it just all hit. And by it all hit, I mean, I hit it. As in a tree and a fence and maybe a little animal. <laughs> Oh, you were distracted. She goes, oh, I can't talk about that part because I don't want to incriminate myself. And so Mia's like, I'm just trying to, like, ask this lady some questions, you know? Like, I'm not trying to chastise her. Uh, but she still, like, can't even admit she did anything wrong, and that's kind of the first step. And so then, I mean, it's the first step in admitting you have a problem in alcoholism, but I don't think we're going to get to that first step. Yeah, I don't think it's the first step in in, in um, avoiding jail time. So, yeah. or a fine. So Mia's like, well, there's going to be a time when you're going to break. And Karen's like, me break? What? I'm like, 
Cameron's face is already like, Aah. and then we see hours later, and we see flashback, uh, well, flash forwards of what's to come next episode, which is lots of fighting and um, accusations, and what looks to be a very fun trip to Lake Norman. Yes, great episode. Um, love having Potomac back. I know, it's so cracking good. me up again. God, it's such a nice feeling to watch this show and laugh so hard. I love that. The, job, I love ladies. that the turnaround was so quick. It wasn't like a three season turnaround. Like they got right back into it this season. They're like yes, back, back the where newbies, they normally are. The newbies came out swinging. Like they are ready to go. They're all funny. They all have kind of a story. Um, so it's it's fun. Good yeah, job. Um, I like them. Loving it. And we will see you guys tonight for Crappy Hour. Thanks for everybody on Patreon um, for listening to the bonuses, checking out our videos, all that good stuff. We love you guys, and we will talk to you next time, okay? Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. We're fanning out for Bethany Fannin. Put your hands together for Carly Clapp. Dana C. Dana Do. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickolus. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurth. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's our favorite streamer, Caroline Peacock. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Rigging the funk, it's Leslie Plunkett. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Let's get feely with Maggie Sheely. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. Cast a spell with Shannon Spellman. The Bay Area Betches, Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish, it's Jen Plish. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie, my favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. Ring that bell for Rachel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. If you like Watch What Crappens, you can listen ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app or on Apple Podcasts. Prime members can listen ad-free on Amazon Music. Before you go, tell us about yourself by filling out a short survey at wondery.com slash survey. In a quiet suburb, a community is shattered by the death of a beloved wife and mother. But this tragic loss of life quickly turns into something even darker. Her husband had tried to hire a hitman on the dark web to kill her. And she wasn't the only target. Because buried in the depths of the internet is The Kill List, a cache of chilling documents containing names, photos, addresses, and specific instructions for people's murders. This podcast is the true story of how I ended up in a race against time to warn those whose lives were in danger. And it turns out, convincing a total stranger someone wants them dead is not easy. Follow Kill List on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to Kill List and more Exhibit C true crime shows like Morbid early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus. Check out Exhibit C in the Wondery app for all your true crime listening. Have you ever wondered who created that bottle of sriracha that's living in your fridge? Or why nearly every house in America has at least one game of Monopoly? Introducing the best idea yet, a brand new podcast from Wondery and T-Boy about the surprising origin stories of the products you're obsessed with and the bold risk takers who brought them to life. Like, did you know that Super Mario, the best-selling video game character of all time, only exists because Nintendo couldn't get the rights to Popeye? Or Jack, that the idea for the McDonald's Happy Meal first came from a mom in Guatemala? From Pez dispensers to Levi's 501s to Air Jordans, discover the surprising stories of the most viral products. Plus, we guarantee that after listening, you're going to dominate your next dinner party. So follow The Best Idea Yet on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to The Best Idea Yet early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery+. Plus. It's just the best idea yet.